What's up, everybody? Max Cavalera, Soulfly. That just happened. Oi! Hey guys, what's going on? It is Front Row Joe with That Just Happened. Made it to the back of the bus with my man over here, Max Cavalera, Soulfly. Thank you so very much for hanging out with us. Really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm happy to be here, you know, excited to be on tour and uh, always, uh, always ready to talk metal. <laughs> Absolutely, and that's one of the things really that we love about you. Uh, you're 24 seven metal, and we're gonna kind of get into that. Uh, so this trip around, you're uh, doing the Soulfly thing, and uh, been doing that for 30 plus years, right. which is a long time. And and uh, even going back to you know uh, the Sepultura days, and now with uh, Cavalera Conspiracy, it's been a family thing. And uh, you've always included family in, in uh, some of those core projects that you do. Is that something that uh, is, is a culture thing, a Brazilian culture thing, or is that a Max thing? I think a little bit of both. Yeah. It's, it is kind of a Brazilian thing. They involve a lot of family in, in a lot of things that they do. But it's also kind of like a, a, a dream of mine to involve family in, in, in what I do and now we got I got my son playing drums you know my wife manages us we have um, my other son is selling merch you know so um, it's cool man you know it's like it's a it's a full-on uh, true metal family you know and uh, um, I wouldn't trade it for anything man it's like the best uh, of both worlds because I, I love the family vibe because everybody looks out for each other and fight for each other and fight with each other so you know it, it, it gets crazy like sometimes I have huge arguments with my son like he doesn't want to play some songs that I love and he hates the songs like no dude listen you I'm the dad you're the son <laughs> You're playing that shit. They got to pull rank on him. Oh, you got, you got you. But uh, you know, it, it's it is really fun. It's a cool, and, and I mean, so fly here. It, even the fam, the, the even the crew, and some of the members feel like family. I know Mark Ruiz is now since '04. Yeah. You know, yeah. he's, he's he's been around with us. Yeah. You know, so maybe adopted family. Yeah, adopted. <laughs> yeah, third generation. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's cool. And, and, and you talked about uh, you know having your kids with you, which is really cool. Um, are you seeing the, the the fan base as well, like the the parents bringing their kids to see the shows? Have you seen that through the years? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, it's cool, man. I love it. You know, um, through um, through the years, the more we tour, the more you see young kids getting into it, yeah. and I think that's totally kick ass, man. It's awesome, and, I, and a lot of those kids they. Or even born when I was doing a lot of the, the classic Sepultura stuff, yeah. and uh, they're totally mesmerized by those albums, you know. And and sometimes it's funny, like the the dad would be like an old Sepultura fan, the son would be a Soulfly fan. Um, a couple of times, the other way around, but not very often. Oh, you know, yeah, most yeah. of the time, like the dad is like the one that like listened to Sepultura a long time ago. You know. The sun like discover so fly, and, but I love seeing you know the young generation in the crowd, and it's always like it's really cool to me. It's really um, feels very um, optimistic for the future of metal. See that metal is conquering generations, you know, and it, it's cool. We all get old, you know. I'm 50, um, but young kids discover this music. It's like they discovering all over again. And I kind of understand that. I didn't understand for, but now I understand because it's the same effect that Black Sabbath and stuff had on me. Like by the time I discovered Black Sabbath, um, they already broken up. Mm -hmm. They were even a, you know a band anymore, you know. Yeah. But they had the records, and I went back and rediscovered them, you know. So I understand the the feeling that they get from coming to these kind of shows, and, and it's it's cool, man. And and 
you know, you talk about the parents bringing the kids out and uh, exposing the next generation to keep it going, just like you said. But you're actually more involved in that, and that you're actually producing the next generation. Your kids <laughs> yeah. are the next generation uh, of metal. How does how does that feel for someone that loves the the music so much to to be you know physically connected like that? Oh, it's it's awesome. You know, um, all both of my kids. Um, are involved in music, which is great. Zion is playing drums for Soulfly. Igor um, has his own band, Healy Magic, and he also does horror books like Stephen King's, which is really cool, man. Like, didn't got that from me. I don't, I don't write no books, you know. Like, uh, um, I like, I like to read stuff like that. It's cool, but he, he he's on his third book now, which, which is crazy. Um, and yeah, you know, like we're trying not to get the grandkids involved. They're kind of like hip hop right now and pop, yeah. but they'll get over that. They'll, they'll come around. We'll convert them. <laughs> <laughs> they they not escaping this cult. <laughs> it's way worse than Charles Manson here. <laughs> I love that, and, and uh, you know, we talked about you know the 30, 30 plus years. You're like you said, fifty. You're twenty two albums in between all of your your projects. Yeah, I, I didn't even know that. Yeah, <laughs> and and you've written a book. Uh, is there anything that you haven't done? Is there something still out on your on your bucket list? <laughs> well, to me, is that is a, the the main thing is the never ending quest for the masterpiece that some people argue some of the stuff you know they love those old records and stuff it's it's cool i don't feel like none of them are yet my masterpiece i still think that i need to do it then I, I you know i need to create that so that's that's the drive yeah. you know that's it's the struggle is the drive is the hunger i'm still hungry for that which i think it's cool you know it's, it shows that you still have um, a reason to look forward and you know some other musicians sometimes they, I think they get complaints and they're like yeah I've done everything it's boring there's nothing else to do this is it's just for the paycheck now it's, you know I don't feel like that I feel that I have a huge a full-on struggle and urge to still get on that studio and create something that it really blows minds, you know, so it, you, you're always trying that with every record. It's always like, you know, I kind of kind of have like this crazy um, preparation on every record. I, I kind of enter with the state of mind. This is the last one. I might die tomorrow. Yeah. So, so that's your mindset going into it. This, let's make this count. <laughs> but then end up being all of them are like that. <laughs> but yeah, it's still, there's still the struggle, it's, it, which is, you know, and then of course then playing live and I'm a I'm a road dog man I'm born from this you know I think I like tour buses and life on the road more than home life which is like really weird <laughs> there's something wrong with me for sure yeah. <laughs> but that's what keeps you out here you talked about uh, um, the the fact that you're looking for that next or the masterpiece to create the masterpiece I think ritual uh, for Soulfly is is pretty damn close to that it's a great record and and it was with an outside producer I mean you've done uh, you know some stuff with uh, outside producers but mainly it's been just you uh, and yeah. self self produced but uh, given how great ritual is uh, given how great th actually that you know we've seen other interviews where you've you said rituals pretty good it's one it's one of the yeah. best ones uh, that's out there will you continue to work with outside producers maybe Josh Wil Wilbur again yeah yeah it work out good you know I think there's some something magical about ritual you know that we, we were able to capture that definitely strikes a chord I think it was kind of a, a was a was a little bit of a struggle to make it because w working with Josh 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 is a huge fan of records like Chaos AD and Soulfly One which was extremely hard to to make those records and especially for Soulfly that's a unique record you know um, so he wanted to get that Max back and I was like this is going to be hard man I don't know you know but we I think we got pretty close, like you say, like the record itself, 
to me it feels really good you know it's not the masterpiece yet but <laughs> it's pretty damn cool and, and and we were still touring we're on the third US tour of that record you know and uh, we still got more touring to do with it so it shows that the record is really strong and people really dig it you know yeah. Well, one of the cool things uh, about Soulfly and the Soulfly records and the catalog is there's always an instrumental uh, on each record and there's always uh, a handful, one or two, maybe three or four guest musicians, artists. And what really stands out to me personally, uh, Randy Blythe, uh, also uh, Neil Fallon, uh, some of those guys. Um, how did the Randy Blythe thing come about? Was that because of Josh's connection with them? Pretty much, you know, I, I'm, I like Limb of God a lot and I like Randy as a person. We did a Killer Be Killed tour in Australia. Yeah, we opened for Lamb of God, so we got to hang out a little bit. And uh, But yeah, but it was really more because of Josh, because Josh is really hooked with them, you know, like it's, Josh is their main guy, you know. And um, I kind of just let Josh deal with that so I just kind of said just play some stuff for him if he likes anything he can sing on it and he fell in love with that behind the eyes which was nicknamed Bruiser Brothers that was the nickname of the song at that time um, and I love what he did his voice is great right it's it's killer and it that song has a really cool story behind because it was it was kind of like it was it's about Zion asking me about how I wrote those old Sepultura classic the trash era classics like um, he was listening to schizophrenia actually which really surprised me you know that so that's even before beneath the remains and arise and he was asking me about from the past comes the storms the track first track of the record and I said well I, I tell you what instead of like me explaining to you how why don't we do it together and we do the song, we just build this song together. So it was like a father and son project, which is like some father and son, they build models together or play Legos or go fishing. I go write a song, you know? And it was killer, man. Yeah. And I think it took like, I don't know, uh, 10, 12 different sessions with Zion. That was just me and him working on the song. So by the time we got to the studio, we had that song pretty much all mapped out yeah. we just had to show Rizzo and Mike how to play it right, right, right. but it was really cool and it's really I love the track you know I love the whole thing the whole even the lyrics which is like based on uh, Cleve Barker Hellraiser Cenobites yeah, yeah. And the whole twisted world you know yeah. um, and then Randy's voice on top of it was just like you know the perfect fit so yeah. I re I'm really happy with that, the, the way that came out yeah so uh, again talking about some of those guest artists again uh, uh, Billy Milano SOD and uh, Benji from Skindred when those guys come in do you give them a direction does the producer give a direction or is it like you know what you do what you do best and uh, we'll you know we'll, we'll put it on the record yeah a lot of times it's like that but you know you you the reason I'm inviting somebody in my record is because I'm a fan of theirs, you know, so uh, as a fan, I like to hear the guy sounding like, you know, how he sounds on their bands, but inside the Soulfly environment, you know, that's the perfect example is Tom Araya when we did Terrorist, you know. Um, and that was really cool because it, you never really hear Tom singing a song like that. Mm -hmm. Slayer doesn't sound like that with all the crazy percussion, yeah, yeah, yeah. the kind of tribal rhythms with a you know trash tribal thing. And that one was really kind of crazy too because I asked Tom to put some Slayer lyrics on top of it, and I was singing parts of Inner Inner Self, yeah. and he sang parts of criminally insane and he didn't want to do it first he was like no I don't know I mean, I, and I was like no dude you have to do it yeah. you know so I was really like I should kind of been an asshole actually like <laughs> it's like forcing the guy to do something that he didn't really want to do it but in the end it came out really cool you know it's just a little real reminder little touch as a fan yeah. of Slayer that I am you know so um, so that was really cool and yeah you know a lot of times 
Uh, I prefer collaborations when they are together with the artists. One of my favorite ones was Jump the Fuck Up mm -hmm. with Corey. Corey. Uh, it yeah. was great because the whole thing, I think I contacted Corey a week before and I found out there he's coming to Phoenix to play with Slipknot. So I went to his sound check, kidnapped him, put him in the, my friend's car, took him to the studio. He didn't know where to sing. He, like it, it was all magic, okay. pure magic, man. You know, it's like one of those things. Like there, I think if you would have, if you would have tried to really make like a better production of it, it wouldn't be as cool. You know, yeah. so that's if we just sat there, and played the song. Like, okay, you sing here, I sing here. Let's just see what this thing goes, you know? And then we sang throughout the whole afternoon. It was almost getting close. It's like, dude, I gotta get back. I gotta show what you do. He's like, we're almost done, Corey. We just, just think one, one more part. And then we drove back to the venue and I got to see you sleep not that night. So that was like the perfect day, man. You know, what a killer yeah. metal day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure. Yes, and but it's not always like that. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta send the song to the guy yeah. that was, you know, with Randy, I, I wasn't there when he did, but that was another cool story. I think the Josh told me that was like he was doing recording the, the Burn the Priest record with Randy, so they were doing vocals, and he mentioned like, "Yeah, you gotta do a song for you know, you remember the Max song, you know." And then they did all the Burn the Priest, and they forgot to do my song, and it was like midnight. And then Josh called Randy like at midnight. Oh, dude, you forgot the Max song. <laughs> yeah, it's like. You can come back or you can tell Max that you couldn't do it. Uh, and he's like, no, dude. He came back to the studio at midnight. So props, man, you know. Uh, yeah. That's that's the real thing right there, man. Yeah. That's That makes it even better, sure. you know. Just shows the spirit, you know, that the metal spirit that we have for each other, you know, the brotherhood. Yeah. So that's that's cool, you know. I like that. That's certainly cool for sure. You mentioned just a little while ago about uh, you know na uh, you know some of the tribal stuff. I think that's one of the things that I really appreciate. Fans appreciate is you're not afraid to throw you know stuff in tribal Navajo chants, uh, flutes, bagpipes. Um, is there anything, any instrument, any style you can't make metal? <laughs> uh, I, you know, to me, it's it, it's kind of cool, man. It's like the going against the grain a little bit you know that's like it's the same like dedicating the albums to god in a in a metal world that's so anti-god you know um and i'm not a hardcore christian or anything like that i just like that i just like to, to dedicate it to, you know to um because i believe in 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 the spiritual world you know so and I like to do stuff like that that's why i have the birimbau and i do the the zumbi chant that's in portuguese and they sing here they sing it in europe even though they don't speak portuguese but they sing that with me because they know the song because it's on the first soulfly record and then later on in the same song tribe on this tour we've been doing a little bit of a peter tosh bob marley get up stand up and we make the metal crowd sing that and it's cool to me it feels a bit like what the bad brains were doing with hardcore back in the 80s yeah. when when I watch the Bad Brains videos, you have all the hardcore stuff and then all of a sudden it turns into a reggae jam and you see all these punk guys jamming with the reggae yeah. and it's like, what is going on here, man? Yeah. This is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how they got away with that, you know? So I see kind of like the same challenge. Like, can I make a metal crowd go into a reggae jam in the middle of a full-on metal show? Yeah, you can, <laughs> and it works. Yeah. And it's cool, because it gives a breather. There's a breather in the right. show. People rest a little bit, you know, so it's not always like fucking <laughs> attack, 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 yeah. you know. It gives, it gives the show dynamics, yeah. which is always cool. Um, but yeah, I love Ritual. The Navajo thing was great. Yeah. That, to me, was kind of like the highlight of, of that record, it was the, going to to the navajo land recording with them building the friendship i'm friends with the, the president now you know so to me having that that chant in the beginning of the record it's it was pure magic it was it was it was a, it was an honor to to have work with them like that and they gave they're, they're so they love me and soulfly and metal in general like when we go to the res you know the shows there are insane you know so 
um, every time I go there, they're, especially now with Ritual, they're even more proud than ever. They're like, man, this is so cool you put us in a map like that, you know, so I, I like that a lot. I, th I think uh, that was the coolest thing about Ritual was that the Navajo connection. Yeah, yeah. And, and you're not afraid to do stuff like that. You carried car batteries into the jungles of, of Brazil uh, for some of the you know some of your songs on earlier records is there anything that you have tried that even you have said no nah, that's just a little bit too crazy we can't we can't do that um, not really I mean <laughs> it's been some crazy stuff like when on prophecy there was a song in the end of prophecy it was uh, I did with the gypsies of Serbia and the gypsies, they are really outcasts in Serbia, you know. Yeah. A lot of Serbian people don't even like them, you know. They're like, to they really look at, at them kind of like... Um, they're outcasts like, of society, right? Outcasts yeah. society, you know, subhumans, you know. And, I, of course, I was intrigued and um, totally uh, captivated by that. So. I had to bring that, so I had, we had like 10 gypsies in the end of the record, and we did a song, it's in the end of Prophecy, it's great, it's called March on the River Drina, it's a World War I song, it has no guitars, it's all gypsy music, you know, like horns and, you know, flutes and shit like that, it's not metal at all, <laughs> uh, but it's, it's cool, I don't know man, it works, you know, it's, uh, the same as, as uh, in the first Soulfly, that there is a, a chant in the very end of the record. It's a, it's a hidden track, and it's a Sutão das Matas. It's a spiritual Brazilian chant from my mother's religion, which is Candomblé, which is kind of like um, like voodoo a little bit, you know, Brazilian voodoo. And um, that really, to me, really closes the record in a really cool way. Yeah. But it's not metal at all. It's like. You know, I, I, I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm just a little bit crazy, uh, attracted to that kind of stuff. Yeah. I like to push the envelope, yeah. see what happens, you know. Sure. Not scared of it, man, never been. Um, so, yeah, and I, I mean, the instrument, the Soulfly instrumental songs were a little bit like that. I was a little bit worried uh, for a while that maybe people wouldn't like it. And then the next thing I know is like, people are loving those instrumental songs. They wanted more, like, what are you gonna, like, what are you doing on the next one? You know, there's always something different. And then became like a huge, constant search of new things yeah. to put in the instrumental. And the last one we had saxophone. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's been a couple with violin. There's one in Archangel I really like, it was with the Dudu, because our Armenian instrument, very eerie, very uh, dark. Um, so it's cool. It keeps it interesting and fun, you know, and because I, I know the metal, I master the metal, you know, so it's like playing heavy and trash, that stuff, that's all like my comfort zone. I can do that anytime. Yeah. Like, but when you step out of your comfort zone, that's when it gets tricky, and you gotta really, um, you know. And that's kind of like sometimes the more, the most fun is those experience, those wild experience. Like you're saying, going to Brazil with a car battery. Like, who does that, man? You know. Uh, and it's this it's right it, it, it's it, it's cool. It, it, when now that's done and it's 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 there. Yeah. It's. It's. I look back with that with pride, you know. Yeah, for sure. And that's. I, I guess that, in a way, kind of keeps you, uh, keeps you going after all these years. Is that experimentation and keeping things interesting on, on your end of things? Would you? Would you say so? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think so because I mean I'm a huge metal fan. I'm, I'm a metal nerd. You know, I, I like nerd out, asking, you know, Joe Grind from Toxic Holocaust his favorite. 10 yeah. trash albums of all time and it's all like what you need that for it's just <laughs> like I, I just like to know what do you what do you think your your favorite 10 trash albums are man i'm just nerding <laughs> i'm just a nerd yeah. you know um so i got that side of me that's kind of like i feel that's kind of like the max 15 year old that never grow up still inside of me you know that metal passion yeah. and that is something that i'll fight to the death to never let that go away because that's the spirit you know that's like 
and uh, and I love that. That's why I'm always looking for new bands, you know, to promote them, talk about them, take them on tour, support the underground. You know, we had a couple of different bands on this tour. We had um, Skin Flint, they were from Botswana mm. on the first part of the tour. Okay. And now System House 33, they're from India. Right. It's really cool, man. You know, and they all talk about, man, you're, you're huge, man. You're a god in India. You know, it's like, you go there, people are gonna go nuts and shit. You know, it's like, all right, cool, good to know. You know, <laughs> one one of these days, you yeah, know, yeah, hopefully, go. there's more more places to go still. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Well, I mentioned uh, off camera before we got started that uh, the name of the outfit that just happened. Uh, you've had a lot, you've shared a lot of some memorable moments. Is there anything that has come top of mind uh, that just happened moment for you? Of recently? Sure, yeah. Yeah, recently. Was, I mean, just the other night, we, we I got together with the, with the Toxic guys and we did a, a death cover of Evil Dead. And um, it was it just came out just killer. There's like I I actually thought of that like after we got done playing like did that just happen man <laughs> this is this is cool man yeah. you know uh, for all the reasons for uh, honoring Chuck you know for his art I don't think he gets enough mm. credit mm -hmm. for what he did for metal you know he was such an innovator. Um, such a talent, great musician, a good guy, you know. Um, to sharing the metal with an opening band like we do, we're big fans of Toxic and uh, they're big fans of my stuff, you know. Um, Joe Grind said some, some stuff I, I was reading the other day, said something that a friend, a uh, cousin of his, show him a rise and change his life you know so that's cool man it's good to scooch it you know, all these stories so when we played that um, that was actually uh, yesterday which was in, in Orlando yeah, yeah. you know that was one of those because it was in Florida and Chuck's from Florida you know um, and you get the whole crowd singing um, yeah definitely uh, definitely like one of the, the recent ones like that and then uh, from old times, I have to say, I, when I was in Japan doing a promotion for Soulfly One, um, Ozzy was playing Budokan, and I got invited to the show. And uh, in the end of the show, he ca he called me up on the stage to sing Paranoid, and I was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> if you would have tell the teenage Max that Ozzy's gonna pull you up to sing Paranoid, I, I would have just say, "Get out of here, man! You're full of shit," yeah. you know. That would never happen, man, you know? Yeah. But it did, and it was awesome. It was like, you know, like after the show, I'm like, I'm not even walking, I'm floating. <laughs> I'm going back to my hotel, I'm floating, you know? <laughs> I don't think I even slapped that night, man. I was like fucking jittering, you know? Yeah, wow. So much adrenaline, you know? Yeah, I mean, cool. just got to sing with Ozzy, God damn, <laughs> I can die now, you know? <laughs> yeah. So that was a, that was like a, uh, definitely, what what just happened moment yeah no that's awesome that's great we certainly appreciate you sharing that uh sharing your time as well we're really excited for the for the show can't wait guys back of the bus max cavalera soulfly and that just happened Oi. <laughs>